when you think of generational sin, what do you think of? I'll tell you what I think of in just a moment. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeremy Bannister, uh, one of the pastors at Heights Christian Church. And right now at Heights Christian Church, we're on a journey to go through the Bible in five years. And if it's always been your desire to want to go through the Word of God, we invite you to go on us with this journey is we're going to read just a small portion of scripture together and pull one thing out of it so that we can apply it to our lives and become a little bit more like Jesus. Uh, if you want to become part of this journey, subscribe to our channel, click the bell for notifications, and uh, these uh, uh, devotions drop daily, Monday through Saturday, and we would love for you to be a part of this journey with us as we go through the Word of God. So what do you think of when you think of generational sin. Well, what I think of as it concerns generational sin is the idea, at least in our culture, of fatherlessness or drugs and alcohol addiction or sex addiction, pornography, uh, gambling addiction, uh, being involved in gangs and the like. In, in my opinion, if we look at the data, we can think of families who have been just butchered by a specific sin that has ravaged a segment of the family. And it's this idea of generational sin that is plaguing the people of Israel as they're being oppressed in this section of Scripture as we're going through the laments of the community in Psalm 79. And we'll see a, a few references toward that. So let's read that together and see if we can get some insight on how to break this idea of generational sin. Psalm 79. O oh God, the nations have invaded your inheritance. They've defiled your holy temple. They have reduced Jerusalem to rubble. They have left dead bodies of your servants as food for the birds of the sky, the flesh of your own people for the animals of the wild. They have poured out blood like water all around Jerusalem, and there's no one to bury the dead. We are objects of contempt to our neighbors, of scorn and derision to those around us. How long, Lord, will you be angry forever? How long will your jealousy burn like fire? Pour out your wrath on the nations that do not acknowledge you, on the kingdoms that do not call on your name, for they have devoured Jacob and devastated his homeland. Do not hold against us the sins of past generations. May your mercy come quickly to meet us, for we are in desperate need. Help us, God our Savior, for the glory of your name. Deliver us and forgive our sins for your name's sake. Why should the nations say, Where is their God? Before our eyes make known among the nations that you avenge the outpoured blood of your servants. May the groans of the prisoners come before you. With your strong arm preserve those condemned to die. Pay back into the laps of our neighbors seven times the contempt that they've hurled at you, Lord. Then we, the people of your pasture, will praise you forever from generation to generation. We will proclaim your praise. And so what we see here is that the people of Israel are going through such a hard time that Jerusalem has been ransacked, that, that people have died, and there's so many dead that there's not enough people to bury the people in the streets. And the psalmist, uh, Asaph, says that the sins of past generations, he doesn't want held against them to perpetuate the type of punishment that they're going through. And this is kind of an hearkening back to the Ten Commandments. If we look at the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 through 6, it says this, You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above, or on the earth beneath, or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. And so Asaph is appealing to this punishment, this, this time that uh, God is punishing the people. And he's saying, don't hold against us the sins of past generations, acknowledging the idea that there are sins that, that could be coming due right now that the people of Israel are paying for. And in the same way, we look at, People today who have struggles, maybe in their family, from fatherlessness and, and a broken home and gang violence or drugs and alcohol or gambling addiction or sex and pornography addiction, we see that perpetuated throughout families. And how we break that 
is an acknowledgement to God. It, one of the things that we need to look at in Exodus chapter 20, verses 4 through 6, is that it says, we perpetuate these things to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me but to a thousand generations of those who love me and obey my commands. That it really isn't like a generational sin in the sense that there's no escape from it, that you're doomed to it, that our struggle with those things because we're surrounded, because our family does not acknowledge God, doesn't mean that that pattern can't be broken. That pattern of sin was ultimately broken on the cross where Jesus died for our sins and calls each of us to repent. And it's through that repentance, and through the repentance of the people of Israel. You know, we can look in Ezekiel chapter 18, where we see that the, the prophet tells the people of Israel that the soul who sins is the one who dies. He doesn't hold guilty the next generation. The next generation is only held guilty to, toward those perpetual sins if they choose not to love and follow God. And the same thing happens to us. And so what we can take from that is we might be surrounded with generational sin that tempts you and me, that you and I struggle with. And the way we break that is giving our love and devotion to Jesus Christ who pr promises us the fulfillment of what we see in Exodus 20. The, the fulfillment of understanding that he's broken sin and he has a place for us that, it, that we draw near to God through repentance and following Christ, and the blessing is for us and for all who would follow Jesus. And we don't have to worry about that generational sin. So if you've been struggling with the idea that this generational sin is just something that you'll have to deal with, and that maybe your children will deal with, and you're haunted by it, know this, that you can break that generational sin by following Jesus. It might be harder for you than the next generation, but the good news is this that breaking that genera generational sin is possible because of what Jesus did on the cross and the promise that we see of God that those who love him, that he blesses to a thousand generations, is still to us. And we can be like the people of Israel, where it says to them, where it says that once they're delivered from, from this bondage that they're, that they're under because of this generational sin, verse 13, it says, then we, your people, the sheep of your pasture will praise you forever from generation to generation. We will proclaim your praise. I pray that gives you hope of starting a new generational line of faithfulness to Jesus Christ that can start even this day. And this day, if you're struggling because there's generational sin in your family, just know that I'm praying for you. I really am for all who will be watching this video. God bless you. And we'll talk to you tomorrow as we look at more of the Psalms and grow in our relationship with Jesus Christ together.